Um, I'm going to talk relatively briefly. I'm Michael Russell, the um, programs director of this year's board. I'm also a digital reference, uh, digital services librarian at New Market Public Library. So, um, before I introduce our pre presentation speaker, or our uh, formal presentation, John Dieter Bogart, Bob, our president, is going to make a couple of announcements. I'm a, a bit smaller here. <laughs> Well, welcome. Thank you so much for, for coming out. Um, this should be a great meeting. In fact, we've got 16 members um, who have come out from the reflection on Bogart on Condos. Hey. And, and thank you, the Marilyn, for 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 your sign and, and, and encouraging everyone to, to come out. Um, also, um, we have a great, great speaker, which I will introduce just after the, the uh, social uh, time. Um, has everyone got their name tags? Yeah. Uh, we're a, a um, great group, but we need to know everyone's names. So, um, and so, Melander has name, name tags here, and we do have a social time here, and, and we just ask everyone to, to meet someone you don't know, and say, say, and say hi. I mean, history is a social experience, and we need to, to know everybody. Uh, I've got just a, a couple of, of uh, comments here. We finally have a website, and this website is called <clears throat> uh, thehistoryhound.com, and Rick McLeod has set it up quite, quite recently. There are a couple of videos. He's setting up more information all the time, but just Google the History Hound, and you can see some some of our New Marcus history. Also, um, <clears throat> the Historical Society has taken on a project to commemorate the beginning of World War I in, 19, in, in, in 2014. And we're just starting the process. So if anyone would like to be part of the committee to to um, organize something about uh, commemorating the start of World War, War I. See myself or, or Chris, Chris Morris after the, 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 the meeting. Um, and now I'll turn it back, back over to, to Michael Russell. Michael. Thanks, Bob. Um, I bought to the reader I was taking some notes, and the one thing that we did mention is that membership is uh, available. Eleanor takes membership. So if you want to join formally, it's fifteen dollars a year. It's a good value for the money. You don't. You can always come to um, presentations free, but um, if you want Harry Carter's professional uh, newsletter, that's for members only. Anybody can join. You don't have to be from Newmarket. So. It's not exclusive that way, but I would encourage everybody to join. So I am now going to, as Bob said, there's going to be a social break before our main speaker. And I'm going to introduce our pre-speaker, our free speaker our free speaker. speaker. Um, <laughs> she's um, might be familiar to you. She's been, um, if not a member of the Historical Society, certainly uh, attending very, for many, many years. So she might be a familiar face. She's a library technician in digital services, actually, at Newmarket Public Library. She has a specialty, kind of, in uh, genealogy and um, indexing newspapers. She was the lead person that did a lot of indexing for the new era, or for the era archive that we have online. A lot of her work went into that. So her name's Pam Hambrock, and she's gonna come up and talk about um, genealogical resources and local history resources at the Newmarket Public Library.
of the, the background information. Can you all hear me? Okay. Um, I, up there? I, I started working in the library. Um, I've been here for over 20 years. I started in 1990. And when I started my job, as Mike said, was to index the local paper. The other part of my job was to work the reference desk. And then as a person who was trained me for one day was leaving, it was, oh, and by the way, about once a month you'll get a letter from someone wanting an obituary record. So just, you know, find the information and mail it off to them. And so I didn't know what I was doing, and sometimes I still wonder if I know what I'm doing because everything changes. So, um, let's see what else. Uh, okay, so 1990, there were no laptops, there were no cell phones, you know, nothing. Everything was done with me going on the computer um, and inputting it into a set of blue binders. So, I know some of you have been in there, you know the blue binders we have? They, they're big, they're oversized. Okay, so I would have to go, someone would mail me a letter. I would go and I'd get those binders, look for the information, and then try to fit it on the photocopier. And if they had names like Smith or Jones, I was photocopying pages out of these binders, mailing it off to people, waiting to hear from them to see which person they actually wanted. I'd have to go to the microfilm, you know, photocopy it, and then mail it away and invoice them. It's so much easier today. <laughs> and we've got three digital um, microfilm reader printers, so you can just come in, look up what you want, stick in your memory stick, you don't have to print it anymore, you can save it. It's great, I love it, it saves a lot of time and it saves a lot of money when I'm emailing people and saying, here's your information, it doesn't cost them anything anymore. So, um, so we've got the three reader printers, we have all the microfilm of the year from 1852, right up to December, no, December's not there, uh, August of 19, 2012, the rest is being microfilm now, we just have to wait for it. Okay, so that's microfilm. I talked about the binders, and now. Um, so there's another index online. No. I just want to show you our web page. Okay. So this is our web page. From here, if you go into research, which you can see there, and under research, there's a, how do I get to click? Um, under research, uh, you'll hit databases. Okay. Okay. So then under databases, you want to go look for these and look for the error banners paper index. Okay. That's an older index. And it just, um, the only thing indexed are newspaper articles, people's names, their births, marriages, and deaths did not get in here. So this is still available online if you want some of the records. And if you can see the years, it goes from 1920 to 1929, 1980 to 1982, and 1992 to 2009. So there might be a bit of overlap in those blue binders with this, but you can do this from home. Okay? So, um, now in 2010, New Market Library received a grant. Uh, and so, what they decided to do was they wanted the microfilm of the era banner digitized. So, a lot of that was digitized. And so, now we have over 100 years available online so that you don't even have to come in. You can just go and look for it yourself. So you can go back into the databases again, and you can either get it through the Era Banner Historical Newspaper Index. I don't know how to go back. How do you go back? <laughs> 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 Thanks. <laughs> so if you look at the index, you'll see this. <laughs> And there's the newspaper digital paper project. Same thing, it'll get you the same spot.
sometimes I don't even have to leave my desk. I can go into the historical paper center online, and I do my research there, and then what I'll do is when I email back the person, if I find the information, I'll let them know and send them a link to the digital paper so that they can do it themselves from now on. Yeah, it saves me time. So, um, and we still are keeping microfilm copies of the paper. So I don't think that's going to stop. Um, so there's usually a four month delay. So why keep the papers for four months? Send them off to the microfilm. I wait for another four months for the microfilm to come back. And then we get rid of the papers. And they're in the cabinets. Okay, um, books. Okay. Um, I did a subject search under genealogy and books, and we have over 550 titles related to ge genealogy. So some of the titles, um, you know, <coughs> bibliographies. Uh, these are reference sources for Canadian genealogy. There's books on methodology, such as Secrets of Tracing Your Ancestors, Professional Genealogy, a Manual for Researchers, Writers, Editors, Lectures, and Librarians. There are, there are land records. Um, we have historical atlases. We have internet handbooks. And I mean, one title was the Everdeen Online Genealogy. And the local history genealogy collection is shelf separate from the regular books. And I believe right now they've been moved back behind the stairs. So they're separate, so you can always find the local history without going through everything else, unless someone's missed the file them. Okay, and so microfilm. So I mentioned we have a year-round microfilm. Uh, and I know people have come to me and told me they go to their office for a certain picture or an article in the paper, and the ER office will tell them to go to the library because we have it all. So I don't know how far back the ER goes online, but I know we've got a complete collection, or as complete as it can be. We also have some tax assessment information and minutes from the town council. Now these aren't complete, we have a few selected years, so you know we can always help you go through those. Um, the other thing for genealogy we have are databases. So there are three databases. We have uh, Toronto Star's Pages of the Past. We have the Ancestry.com Library Edition. And we also have, as I said, the uh, Digitized Era. So I did want to show you Toronto Star Pages of the Past, uh, which looks like this. And search over 110 years of history. And when I checked it, right now it goes from 1894 up to 2010. So that's what's on it every year, they add a new year. So you can search by word, phrase, a date, or a date range, or a combination of words. So um, it will let you search for up to five years at a time. So again, you go to our databases, under research, find T for Toronto Star Pages of the Past. And what you would do is beneath the 100 years of history, there's a little thing there, click here to search. And that's where you would put in your search terms. It's right there, so. It is good, I find sometimes when I'm searching it, it's better to be a little vague and not too specific. You're searching for more, but you might get what you want then. Okay, um, ancestry.com is the next database. Now, when you hit it, this is what it looks like. I find the best way to look into this is to hit the gray search button at the top instead of filling in the information, okay? And that's what you get. So this will allow you to search by country, by province, by state. So you can narrow it down and you're just getting things more specific to what you want. And when I did, I did click on the Ontario, Canada, Ontario button. Just to show you the uh, right-hand side there, so, which cut off the top, um, births, marriages, deaths, and census records are on there. But at the bottom there, you'll see they've got other things that they're adding to it, the stories and publications. And, um, I know there are a few, not very many, but there are some um, references to some records for Ontario schools, directories and church histories. Uh, there's Ontario tax, criminal, land and wills records, and a few listings under Ontario stories. Not many, but a few. They're kind of fun to look at because I look at them. And then, of course, we have the digitized era. Right? 
Thanks. Um, so this is the page if you did follow the links to the Fiera. This is what you get, and you can see that over the years the paper has changed names. So you can do a general search in that search button there, which would give you all kinds of hits. Or if you clicked on a paper, which I did, I went to the Air Express, it narrows it down. So I can search specifically now to the era for the years that were folded. Those are the ones available under the new market era. So you can do that. And then I also wanted in this, it, to point out the comment section. There's a comment section on the back of that. And so when I hit that, I got eight comments. So those are the eight <coughs> comments for the Aaron um, Express. And then if you hit the next one, you can always comment. Like once you get to the comment page, you can always leave a comment. So you'll see that you can add your own comment. So that's about all I wanted to say, <laughs> which was probably fast. <laughs> but, um, you know, I don't know if you have any questions. That's very difficult to do, Pam, and Pam is not, um, does a lot of one on one service at the library. So if you're going to bite that off and do all that, that's great. Were there any questions about that? Yes? Yes, it would. You, you, you can search when you do Canada, Ontario. You would be able to search the name, you know, any names you want. You can put in the place. So if you were doing a birth record, you know, there'd be a place for the place we're born. Um, you could put in the parents' names, you know, under it as well. So, yes. Yes, as long as there's been a record for it and they've recorded it, yes. No, no, as long as it's up there. I think um, Ancestry.com now, I'm not sure, but I, I heard that, you know, it's a website that the Latter-day Saints has. And so whatever records they have on their onefamilysearch.org site is probably there. And I do know that they keep updating the site because I couldn't find my father's family for years and all of a sudden last year it was up there. So I think they're constantly adding to it as well. The library has it, so if you want to use it, you can come in to the library and use it there if you don't want to pay for it. Now, I know one of the advantages of paying for it is that if you pay for it, you would be able to add your own information onto it, right? So you can add your own family histories onto it. At the library, you can't do that. So it's great for searching, so, you know. Bob? Awesome. You know what? I've never done that. I don't know. I'm used to searching for family names first and then putting in the town I think they're from. So I don't know. I would say it's possible. It's, the way you access it, like the screenshot that she had that showed Ontario, it's just a different way to get to the actual city names and geographic names. So you can do it by a map or you can enter the search term in a search in a query. <laughs> We're friendly, you know, most, we, I, I said staff, I know there are two staff members that work at the reference desk as well. They actually are researching the family history. I kind of play around at it when I get some free time. But they've actually done a bit more with it, so yes. You can ask us. We're willing to help, and if we don't know, we're willing to learn.
going to have a social break. I'll just say about libraries, one of the difficulties libraries have is kind of relating the jargon that we use to the wider public. So some of the things like databases and uh, even reference services, even genealogy, people just might not know, well, probably no one here, but sometimes out there, it's just family history, researching family history. So hopefully, um, we'll have other aspects of the library down the road, and please come in. Pam and I both work on the lower level. So why don't we take a break, a social break, and um, oh, oh, she has for ten minutes, right? And then we'll uh, introduce our main.